Okay, we're going to do a long format video here, and I am going to build us a, let's find a fuzz face here. Basically an Eagle tutorial from download of the program to setting it up to building our first uh, quick PCB. Uh, finishing it, checking it, Gerberizing it, and uploading it to a site. So I think it'll be a fun video. Make sure we're actually recording, and we are. Uh, okay, so first thing, let's go on to Google Images and find us a fuzz, well, not just a fuzz face. Original fuzz faces are PNPs. We want to do an NPN, quick and easy, without any bullshit. Hey, look. Let's face NPN silicone. Let's open that up. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's uh, open image in a new tab. Close that. And close that. There we go. We have got it. That is a PNP. What in the fuck? Let's do this over again. Pardon me. NPN. Fuzz face. NPN fuzz face. Okay, there we're at NPN again. NPN. All right. Oh, I see what I did. I didn't scroll down far enough. There it is. There's an NPN. Let's open that in a new tab. Let's close all the shit. Bam. Bam. And there's our NPN fuzz face. So the first thing we are going to do before we do anything else, we're going to find this fuzz face schematic. We're going to look at it. It's an old one. And we're going to fix a couple things. And then we're going to draw it out. So that's the first thing we are going to do. So let me grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, open up our window here and we are going to copy that schematic down and we got an input you need to be learning how to draw schematics for sure ground um, we're gonna go cap oh, what the fuck did i do that for we don't need that go off input negative for 2.2 uf right into our first NPN this might be boring but hold tight because it will be cool by the time we're done ground bring our emitter follower over okay um, I should have done this this way Point two, you do 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 in pin sign ground circle that emitter follower over to our I mean I can basically draw this in my sleep nowadays anyway in pin sign down we're gonna tie into that emitter drop this down to our fuzz pot. And then our wiper goes to our cap. Go ahead and mark your pluses just in case you're dumb like me and you get lost easy. Uh, let's go ahead and connect our collector to our base. And we've got our collector resistor, collector resistor, our collector feed. And, uh, oh, they got that proper already at 330. Old ones are 470. On the silicone, we can go 330. 8K2, 33K. And we've got Q1, Q2. Then our caps, we have, they're not marked on here. Oh, I guess we're marking them. Q1, Q2, let's go C1 on that. Let's get over here to our next cap. We have C2, then our coupling cap going out. We will call that C3. Then that goes to our out pot. Ground.
around and out. So let's draw out on that. And we've got in here. And okay, now we're going to add a couple things. These were designed for batteries, so there's no power supply cap. We are going to add one. That will just be a 47 UF, put a ground on it, 47 UF from our supply rail to our ground. And then that's gonna be nine volt plus in. Then we will add a pull down resistor before the cap. Ground that one meg, no, 2.2 to one meg, two into one meg, it's fine there. And that will be R1. Let's do this. Uh, uh, well, you go input, top, down. So that's going to be R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Then that's all the resistors. Cross all that shit out right there. And we're all marked up. Um, we will add a LED too. So let's come off this. LED and that's going to be LED that's going to be an out and then here we will have a ground minus in and then that will be grounded that's important when we're doing the uh, schematic in here you got to make sure anything that's going to be a ground pad has a ground on it or you at least renamed the net after it to ground even if it's not connected to anything run a net off of it, label it ground, and it'll connect it to ground for you. So there we go. We've got our schematic. Beautiful. Now let's go punch that in to Eagle. I'll close that out. And okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. First we're gonna we've got Eagle here opened up. Say we've just downloaded it and this is what it looks like. You've got nothing this is the first screen that's going to pop up. This is your intro screen, your home screen. Um, so first we're going to set things up. Um, let's go to the internet. Um, let's see, did I close all the internet? Okay. Ooh, new incognito window. Shit, I could look at porn. Let's open that up. Then... Let's go to Osh Park DRU. Click that open. And now downloading CAM files. This is our design rules. We want to use the rules from Osh Park because they're perfect for pedals and what we're doing here. So right here, go to Osh Park Eagle Tools. Um, go ahead and make yourself a folder in your download. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, no, let's just go to, let's just go to documents, new folder, uh, Osh Park, DRU, we'll put that right there, let's go back to here, and we have got cam rules, we want those, um, you can do two layer with slot paths, download that. Um, whoa, why isn't that automatically downloading? What the fuck? Interesting. Where's the download button at? Well, I'm not going to waste time figuring that out. But anyway, you download it. Um, let's see, I downloaded mine to uh, um, my desktop. So let's find that real quick. Desktop. We have Osh Park. It's going to be zipped. You need to unzip that. Copy it. Close it. Go to our DRU file we made. Just paste that in there. Now we're going to go to uh, back to uh, Make sure it's still recording. Yep, it is. Okay, now we're back in Eagle. We're going to go to... Uh, shit. 
that's right we need to make our project first so let's make a project um, new project we'll call this NPN fuzz face and now we will open that hit new schematic then we will open that hit new new board yes great from schematic okay now while we're in here let's go to options um let's see no it's our home control panel directories design rules let's go to browse cancel browse um, we'll go to wash particle tools DRU and we'll hit select that folder okay next we will go to Okay, next we'll go to uh, the internet again. We're going to go to Mad Bean Pedals Forum. We are going to go to Forum Home, Members Area, CADSoft Eagle Resource, then MBP 2017 V3, and we're going to download that library right there. And uh, then that concludes the tools that we need from the internet. And once we've got that downloaded, we will take that um, downloaded file. And I've already downloaded it. And put it somewhere. It doesn't matter where you put it. Just unzip it, put it in a space, in a safe space where you want to store it. Then once you've got that figured out, go back up here to options, directories, click this, mine's on my C drive, Eagle 9.6.2 libraries, but you'll browse and uh, C drive, blah, 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 blah. Then you'll find your uh, libraries and you'll click on the folder and open it. And then you will just hit okay. And, uh, then that will point you to your library's directories. You'll want those libraries because they're great. They're quick, they're more condensed and less confusing than all the uh, Eagle libraries that come with it. So now we've got our libraries. We'll come in here and you, we will uh, open that library. This is what you'll get. MBP 2017 and uh, all those MB parts. There will be two folders. There will be a folder within a folder. You'll have the old school one, then you'll have the 2017 one, and you need to go through and you need to mark all of these. There used to be a facility for where you could just mark them all, but for some reason it's not in here. So this is annoying as shit. You have to go through and turn on all these folders. And then hopefully the subfolders will be on yes. So, okay. So now all those parts are turned on and available. So go ahead and close that, close that. Now we've got our project. We have made a project called NPN fuzz face. And we have, uh, save. And then we'll save that and call it NPN Fuzz Face. Okay. So now we've started that project. We made a schematic. We made a board. Now we've saved the names of it and it'll be under our original project we started. So we will start with schematic. Double click that. It's going to open up. Now we need to grab our parts. Um, from earlier we made our schematic now we can count them out and make a quick BOM one two three four five 
resistors. Two electrolyte, oh, one, two, three electrolytic caps. Three electrodes. One box cap. And that's it. So simple. Two pots, 16 millimeter. Then we need a diode. LED and we need to oh we need six resistors we need a resistor for that uh, diode for the LED so don't forget to put that in there that's necessary you'll either blind yourself or blast your LED out of the box and then we need uh, one pad in a ground pad so that's going to be four pads that we'll need all right, so let's go to our parts. We click this uh, here. Let's cancel this. I'm going to go over here and see if I can't. Uh, uh, mouse. Let's pause this real quick. Okay, so I made myself a big old gigantic pointy mouse because it'll make this so much easier for you guys to follow. So go over here to add a part. Click that. Now we will scroll down to our Mad Bean parts. Or just say MB parts on them. We can turn off those Eagle PCB parts, but we still want them because they're nice. Uh, let's go to box cap. We need one of those. Let's see, let's go to five millimeter medium. Big fatty, big fatty. That's medium, that's perfect. And this will be a 7.2 by 3.5 millimeter total size. And it will be a five millimeter spacing. That's a, that's pretty standard. You got two millimeter, five millimeter, 10 millimeter. If you're just going with a regular 50, 35, 63 volt cap, five millimeter will be standard on most everything. Hit OK and it'll give us that and we can place it. Let's go back to parts. Close that. Box caps. Now we want electros. Let's go to 22 to 500. Click that open. So we've got eh, smaller, bigger, two millimeter, perfect. So let's click that one, okay, and we'll put one, two, three of those on there. Double check one, two, three. And then we'll go back to our parts. Close that. We'll just grab things in order. We got diodes. Uh, let's scroll down to LED. Find us a five millimeter, that's standard, five millimeter LED. Let's throw this up at the very top. Uh, then we'll grab our, this is gonna be a long video guys, so hang in there. It's gonna be fun. Uh, let's six millimeter resistors or standard quarter inch or quarter watt I mean. There we go, six millimeter spacing there. Lead holes spaced one to six holes apart for point one per four, blah, 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 suitable for quarter watt. Length six millimeter. Um, most resistors are gonna be six millimeter and a quarter watt. So let's click that. And we have how many resistors? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's everything there. Uh, we'll need some supply. Let's go down to MB Supply, go up to MB Supply, right there. Let's grab us a 9 volt terminal. We'll just set this way up here in the corner. Uh, we'll grab us a minus 9 volt, drop it up here. And then, uh, actually, shit, that was. Uh, and then we'll ground, uh, yeah. We could have done that a different way. Grounds we'll have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven grounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, we can, let's go ahead and delete this guy. We don't need it. Go back to our parts. And we'll just ground terminal. There we go. That's better. That ground T is going to have a, a, a lug built into it. And then we need an in and out. Here we go. Input in T. It's going to be a pad. We'll put that at the front. We've got an out T, which is going to be a square pad. And we'll put that at the back. And now we need two pots. That should round out all of our needs for this. Pot. Go to 16 millimeter pot. There we go. That work. We need all the square pads. No. Stupid pots. Let's just go with that one. Yeah, fuck it. Let's go with that one. We'll have one, two. Um, now we will go ahead and get this baby wired up. Um, I'm really hating this cursor, so I'm going to zip back over to my settings and uh, fix that. There we go. That'll at least still be more visible. Okay, let's go to move. Let's start rearranging some stuff. We're gonna put our one, our input over here. Pot one will be our gain control. We're gonna move that over here. Forgot our transistors are one. We're gonna click that and hold it. Left click to drop it. Left click to pick it up. And then right click to rotate it. So we're going to rotate that. And then we're going to move its ground up here. We can zoom in. Then next is going to be our capacitor C1. Actually, C2, because I forgot. I grabbed that. Uh... And negative first. Let's go ahead and grab those transistors. Let's just go with a. Uh, 3904 footprint closed diodes transistors eh, 3904 there we go perfect works good bam bam generic NPN sort out your pin out later All right, so we're gonna move this up over here. And try to, this is your center marker for your board. This is kind of where everything kind of heads off of so you can find your spot. Just kind of use this as a line and do everything to the right of that and above it. So you get used to that and the habit of it. It's a lot easier to do other things in here as you get more advanced. Let's move that over. And we will put a couple grounds here. R2 is going to be our collector. R3 is going to be our emitter for. Then R4 supply resistor there. R5. Make sure we got R5 in there, right? And R6 is going to be for our diode LED. Let's just scoot it way over here. C1 here, that's our box cap going out. Just go ahead and set that up. Grab our out pot there. Then C3 is going to be our. Uh, Let's 
gain cap on the emitter. Come on, just move, you bastard. Then our power supply filtering is going to be that electro there. Let's move this up. And scoot that down, leave it there, it don't matter. Our gain again. And this is going to be our gain pot. Let's move that down. There we go. And I like to move things down because I don't like to connect connectors straight to connectors. I like to only connect them with nets. So we're going to click this net button right here. Grab that. Activate that tool. And then click right there. And we've just connected those two. Then we're going to go from our part to that net and click. It's going to give us a little net connection dot. Then from our pull down resistor to our ground. From our emitter to our ground on Q1. Input cap to base on there. Stop where you want to go. Down, click it, and then go over. You click to that. Uh, let's just go ahead and we will connect that right to there. Connect this emitter right there. Come off that connection over here. Click it to that. Connect our pot to ground. Oh, 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 oh. Back up. This is why we draw a schematic out by hand so we don't get lost. And our wiper goes to the gain cap. Now we'll go ahead and connect our collector to our base. Connector to our resistor. Connector to the resistor. Um, now let's go ahead and come over, right click, come down, click, come up to the right click. Um, let's come up to this, right click, let's ground that cap. Let's send this over to our diode. Let's go ahead and there's our output capacitor. Go into our volume pot. Uh, we can just clean that, double click that. Jesus, bitch. Turn it off. Grab our move tool. Move this ground up here. And connect it. Take this ground over here. Just set that out of the way. Set this one out of the way. So we're out connection over. All right, let's finish these little traces up or nets as they're called in here or segment in the ground yes because it said that since we stopped it earlier just in midair and left it there it gave it a generic name which would be based off the pot's name pin one net whatever um, once we added ground then it asked us to change the name of that net to the ground net so what we can actually do so you can click that, hit info, and it'll tell us the name of it, name GND. So the name of that entire net is, is now ground to match this. All right, let's uh, move the rest of these pieces around here. Our nine put, nine volt input. Right, let's just stick that up over there. There's our dot, our, uh, oh yeah, <sighs> fuck. Grab this, we'll rotate it. We'll put our diode right there. And we need one more for our diode output. Um, I thought I made a ground pad, oh yeah, ground T is on here. Ground T right there. So we need to move that. How we can do that is move it is just delete the net. And now it's freed it back up again. Hit your move button. Grab it. 
move it out of the way. And now we can just put a regular ground on there. We don't really want to grind, ground that specifically to this. I mean, it doesn't matter because we're going to just ground pour the whole thing. But still, I like to keep my schematic grounds separate from my net grounds and input grounds. So then this ground here, uh, we shouldn't need this. Let me look around. Everything's grounded, emitter's grounded, pull down resistor, power supply cap, uh, that's all good. We're all good there. And so we don't need this ground. So we can just delete it. Goodbye. Go back to move. Let's go ahead and plug in our nine volt supply there. Onto our power supply yet, merge that. Connect those. Now we just need a lug for a pad for our uh, so we go back to MB supply we need a pad for our uh, LED output it can be anything I mean just uh, we can make it out T but we'll have to change the name of it ground T um, let's see what an out T looks like no pads no pads so we'll just do another out T and then we'll change the name of it. That's, that's important later. Or it's not going to work. So let's just lay it there. And then we will go ahead and connect it. And then we will scooch that over. Then let's uh, go to name. Click on that net and see it's called out. All right. Now look at this one. That one's also called out. So on the board, these two will be connected to each other. Oh, fuck off. So what we need to do is rename this to LED out. You can call it anything. You can call it monkey foot if you want. But we're just going to call it LED out. And that will rename that and the pin that it's connected to. You can't rename the pin. But... I mean, you can rename the pin, but it, it doesn't matter. What you want to do is rename the net that it's connected to. That's the biggest thing. Then ground eight. That's good. That means that is a pin or a lug or a pad, whatever you want to call it. That is actually ground, grounded and connected to our other grounds. So, all right, there's that. Our schematic is complete. We have our power in our new power supply filter cap since this is not battery powered like an old ancient one with the battery power you don't need that because a battery is a perfect dc power supply and it has its own capacitance storage you know it's a giant capacitor with a hellacious current supply so we don't need a cap with those but now since we're doing this modern we need to add one so, grab a cigarette after that. Make sure we're still recording. We are. And now we'll go start laying this out. So let's go up here. Follow the cursor right up here to schematic and board. And there's all our parts in a little line. Look at that. So beautiful. And what we're going to do is first is we're going to grab some dimensions and set up our board. Um, we're going to make this for a 125B size box. Um, that way it'll be deep enough to fit two pots and top jacks and all that stuff. So we're going to go to draw, dimension, and we know that a 125B is 55 millimeters ish. So we're going to make this a little smaller so there's plenty of room. So we're going to make this 52 millimeters. So zoom in. Click on this. And 
What the fuck? Oh, never mind. Uh, it, it, sometimes this happens. In that case, just hit Control Z. That's our undo, and get rid of that. It automatically went ahead and grabbed our dimension for me. So let's uh, let's just start right here in the corner. Vertical draw. And what we're going to do is make this one. Doesn't have to be very deep. What we got to do is take into consideration that we've got like 100 millimeters is the long dimension of the 125B. So we want room for the jack to not interfere with the PCB, but we also want room to bring the PCB back from the front so that there's room for the pots and for the PCB. So we'll figure 100, take away 16 is the diameter of pot, add four as a buffer, so that'd be 20 millimeters. Then, uh, yeah, so we'll make this 40, 40 millimeter. And then we'll go ahead and run this across the board and click it again. And that's our depth. So now we can go up here to the move tool and we will move this dimension down and click it just like that. Then now we need to make it 55 millimeter wide. So let's go ahead and shave five millimeter. Let's just make it 50 millimeter. And then that makes it easy for us to divide it in the center to 25 millimeter. Um, yeah, so 25, 12.5, it's all indivisible pretty easily. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the dimension again. We'll do it horizontal and we'll grab and go horizontal and what did I say 50 yeah oh, 50.8 that's perfect close enough and now we've got that dimension and then we can grab this and pull it in And everything is close enough. We can get our move button. We can move this. Got to click it right underneath the uh, decimal point. All right. So now let's go find the half size of the board. Dimension. And we're gonna cut this board and oh, we're gonna cut this board in half. So we know 25.4. Wow, look at that. That's exactly half. 2580. And then we're just gonna bring this down here and drop it. Now I've bisected our board. And and these 0.80, I mean that's so negligible, you'll never notice that. We can get really anally meticulous about it but right now we're just trying to do this fast all right now we can start let's start loading up the board let's just grab our move tool or we can just we can grab our move tool and click that will highlight it right click and you can toggle between the part and its name here i'll drop it and you can see that all right we've clicked it now, if we click it again, we'll just move the name. Now, if we click it and we right click, we can toggle between the name and the cap. We just want the cap. And we will go ahead and let's see, let's place this right about here. I've done a million fuzz face layouts, so this shouldn't take me long. The other way to go ahead and move all these parts is go ahead and hit your group right there. Highlight that, then come and highlight. Let's highlight these items. Then hit the Move tool, right click and hit Move Group. And we can move that whole group up here. Um, by right clicking, once you've got it held, you can spin it around. So we'll go ahead and set that right there. 
and we'll look at our schematic. R2.2 is C1. Uh, I don't know where I left C1 at. Oh, that's right. I pulled this. Let me annotate that. C1 is actually our box cap. C2 is our input cap. So grab the move tool, grab it, pull it down, and we'll just set it over in here. Let's grab our LED, move it up in the center. Uh, let's see which ones are. C2 is our distortion cap. Oh, fuck, that's right. I changed those. Okay, here's where we drop this and we go back to our schematic and take a look. Just hit the schematic. C4 is our power supply. So we want to put that up top and right because our fuzz pot's going to be on the left, our volume's going to be on the right, so it'll be on the output. So C3 will go on the left, C4 will go on the right. Hey, and that's where we're at. And when you switch back, it'll automatically go to group setting. So hit your move tool or you'll just be sitting there spinning your wheels. Okay, let's scoot those over. Then let's go ahead, group, highlight all these resistors, move, right click, move group. And we'll just drop them right there. cigarette went out wake up people we got a ways to go yet I'm trying to make this at least no longer than an hour all right so we've got our pull down resistors R1 move tool click on R1 we will scooch it over here um, let's go ahead and we'll just pick that as ground down. Then we have our next resistor is going to be R2. It's power supply resistor. Let's get that over on this side. Then. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do our, let's see, that's off the input. Yeah, this should be our emitter resistor. We'll go ahead and put that right there. Yeah, flip it over. So it's, see, it's connected right to our input cap. You can see it on these unrouted line. Actually, we can go ahead and route those real quick. Um, let's do it this way though. Since this will be the top side of our board, let's make this board completely flat with no traces at all. So we're gonna, let's do this so that all of our traces are hidden on the back in our bottom uh, solder layer, copper layer. So let's go ahead and just connect, ah, uh, shit. That's a really little trace. Why are those connected like that? Oh, I see. Anyway, let's go up here and make a big trace. Width. We will go to 20. Actually, we can go bigger on this. Let's go to 24. Make it hella big. We'll zip that trace right up to there. Then we have our input right there. Let's go ahead and we'll just let's bring this around to the sun. And we'll click it right there. I still have no idea why that cap is showing is encroaching on itself. That's really weird. Uh, we can swap them out if we need to. Okay, our next move, let's pull. Okay, we'll need to go to our gain pot. So let's pull our pots up here. Double click to turn off. 
the uh, damn uh, air wire and then switch to the move. Okay, pot two should be our out. Now what we will do is check our pot. Sometimes it's easy if you just put a pot right in front of you and you remember that turn to the right, the wiper sitting the right leg, turn to the left, the wiper sitting the left leg. So to turn this whatever's in the middle off, we want to send that to the left leg. But you got to remember that this we're looking at the back side of the pot. So this pot is correct. For a volume pot going out, it's perfect. It's just fine. Um, this, now the way this one works is as you turn the wiper, well, we're looking at it backwards here. As you turn that wiper clockwise, looks counterclockwise here because remember we're in reverse, you can flip the board to kind of, let's flip the board with that button. All right, now we're looking at it as if we had the pedal in front of us. We've got the output here. We turn the wiper counterclockwise to this, turns counterclockwise to ground. This, we want to turn clockwise to full gain. But we've got to ground that cap to get full gain. So this is backwards. So highlight that and then click your center wheel down to flip it. Bang. To the back of the board if you want. But we don't have to do that. We'll just go ahead and flip it like that. But I hate the way that looks. Let's see if we can do the uh, flip upside down. Huh. Well. Okay. Yeah, there we go. It's probably going to read backwards, though. Or upside down. Interesting. Completely forgot what I was doing there. Trip A. All right, let's just go put that back. Let's flip the board back. All right, this is going to be upside down. But you know what? Fuck seeing this anyway. We can delete that. So let's go here. We'll grab a Solero. And we will... Click and delete. And we can relabel that. So let's just relabel it now. Go to A, type in F U Z Z, hit OK. And that is backwards, you bastard. Oh, yeah, because it's putting it on the bottom. Remember, we want this on the top. So we're going to hit top. There we go. And, ah, motherfucker. Here. Control Z. Undo. Ooh, edit. Redo. So we can get rid of that. Um, let's go to. We're going to go to the T place. Layer 21, that's where our text goes. That's where the screen print goes. So click that. Now we can lay this on there. And we're going to put that below it. Right there. Actually, it doesn't matter that we have it below. We can go ahead and move it to the top. There, that's fine. Let's bring these in just a touch. Okay, there we go. Let's bring this one in an equal amount. And we will line those up better here in a minute. And let's go ahead and delete this. Delete. Click that X. And it's gone. Delete works the same way as select. Sometimes if you're on top of two items that need to be deleted, one's going to highlight. Don't click it again. Instead, right-click it and toggle between the two things, and uh, 
That way you delete what you want to delete. You'll figure that one out. All right, let's go ahead and, ow, my neck. Let's go ahead and pull this uh, LED down a hair. All right, so where were we? We've got, move this cap down. We've got R2, which is for, um, what's R2? Let's go back to our schematic. R1, R2, R3, R3. Okay, we've already got R3 planted, R2, R4, and R5. Ow, my neck. Okay, R6. Oh yeah, select our move tool. We'll move this up here. Boom. That feeds our diode. And we'll set R2, R5, and R4 over here. Um, let's go ahead and pull these pads up. Bring up out two. We know out two is going to be for our LED. It says LED out right there if you look. And we can actually delete that out too because we don't need to see that. It's just going to clutter our shit up. Then we've got out one. Oh, shut up. Out one. Here, let's do group. Group select all this shit. I'll just set it all over here. You got to get it on the board or else it won't stick. Move tool. Uh, is this Q1? Let's see, I would say Q1. We'll go ahead and put that down here since it's closest to our input, to the base, to our input. We want that all nice and close together. And we'll put 2Q2 right above it. Now well, let's see what we got. Let's see where things are going here. We've got that's going to the input there. Let's go just go ahead and trace that. Let's route that on the bottom. Make sure to select bottom. We want to keep these all on the bottom. I mean if guys in the 60s can etch this out with no vias, no jumpers, and no bullshit in the 60s, we can do this all on the one layer. And we can hide that layer. <clears throat> it's easy. Mm -hmm. So let's see where we're at here. We've got our fuzz up. And that's going to this one. So let's go ahead and send this over there. And we'll send this up to there for now. We can move all these. We're just trying to clear some of the unrouted wire clutter. And we've got that ground. Go ahead and see where this is wanting to go to. This one's going to R5. Let's move that closer. Boom. Let it nice straight shot. Let's see where this one's going. Okay, a good straight shot to our output capacitor. Okay, I see. Yeah, we can just, we can bring that up and across. Let's do that real quick. Let's go up. And across. Let's go ahead and bring this down. Boom. Should be pretty clean. are these this one okay this pin's going to the center let me look at the schematic okay that pin's going to the center there okay we can flip this go ahead and flip this nine volt and nine volt are next to each other now off our supply let's go ahead and route those together nice 
things. Then this wants to go from here to there and from here to there. So let's actually just go closer first. That's how we should do it like that. And then we can jump her off this. Let's bring it up and away from that pin. And then we can drop it down in there. There we go. Now those are connected. And this, that's grounded. See, it says GND. We do not have to connect anything that says ground on it right now. Nothing. So don't connect or waste any time connecting grounds. We'll do that here in a little bit. All right. Um, okay, this one's ground side. Let's go ahead and move this on the other side of this trace. Let's move this trace. And let's tuck this cap right into here. Let's flip it over. And we will point that up. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's wire that up real quick. Go over. Oops. There we go. I still don't know why we're showing a encroachment issue on those. It's weird. All right. Um, let's go ahead and rotate this for sake of uh, continuity. We want to. It's good to have the polarity of your caps facing the same way. Yeah, I, you know, if you're weird like me, and you've got ground planes that are so easily routed through things. All right, so that looks pretty straight with each other. Let's scoot that over just a hair. It's, oh, bastard! Move that trace over just a hair if we want. Sure, why not? And we'll move this capacitor over. Let's tuck everything into a nice, we're trying to make everything nice and centered. From here to there, from here to there. Pretty close. Here, let's move this out of the way and then we can look at the distance pad to the screen. Looks even to me. Let's drop that right there. Okay, now we're going to try to tighten everything up. So let's move it. There we go. Let's get that tight right there. We'll move that. Oh, stop. Let's grab this trace. We just want that trace. Let's go ahead and scooch it a little more right there. That's pretty. Let's grab this. Scooch it up here. Uh, let's space it. Well, we're going to have to change our grid spacing to do that. Let's move our transistor up just a touch. That's fine. There won't be interaction between that lug, that emitter lug, and that base there. So we'll go ahead and scoot this up. Hey, that's pretty. Go ahead and move this trace over now. Angle this trace. We're just using the move tool here. Let's get that. Oh, fuck. Just using the move tool. There we go. We're moving what we've already got. And oh, we'll get rid of that and get that off of that capacitor there or that other leg the ground even though it's already showing that it's got a clearance issue let's check all of our other clearances uh, this can be angled now all these angles look great clearances look great let's move this cap over a bit let's line the edge of it up at least with the edge of the capacitors and that with the edge of these parts so there's no undo spaces that look weird. 
Oh, that's fine right there. All right, now to our pads. We want our positive pad in right here. We want this further enough away from here so we can, you know, get plenty of room in one. Okay, let's bring this down here. Here we go, in one, out one. Let's bring it right there. Ground eight. This is our ground pad for grounding our diode. All right, now let's go ahead and trace these. Power in to our supply cap we added earlier. Uh, we're gonna have to flip that R6, so move tool flipped there we go now let's route that we can just bring that right off the cap and then we will bring this up boom that's it oh and we have to run this all the way around the board down here to our led out so let's go ahead and move that led around a bit there we go we'll just turn it sideways just like that and we've still got it centered that's why I ran that center mark right down the center so we can get our diode laid up just like we need it and so now we can go ahead and run that trace make sure we're on the bottom come up we're gonna move those pots up a little bit and remember this is just going to be on the back, so nobody's ever going to see it. Hey, quit that. Quit. Okay, let's just drop that right there for now. Let's scooch our out pad back a bit. And let's continue tracing that. And there's that. All right, since we're going to want these to look nice, we'll go ahead and move this up. So everything is kind of, and we've got our grid setting. If you go up here, you'll see our grid settings at 50 mil. 50 mil is what it's going to automatically snap it to on the grid. If we zoom way in, some, oh, here, I'll show the grid here. Click grid, grid, display on. Hit OK. Now we can see our grid lines. Those grid lines are great for, you know, at least seeing where it's going to snap to. All right. Still on our move tool. Let's bring this down. For right now, we're going to set that right there. Um, yeah, that's good. They're all lined up. You can check your grid spacing. Four squares, four squares, four squares. Perfectly centered and spaced from the edge and from the center. And we can check that with our resistor too. We've got that just right. One and a half, one and a half. Everything looks good there. Pots are spaced perfectly. And there, my friends, we have it set up. So let's finish the rest of these traces. Bring this straight down to our end. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to run this trace. I, mean, I could have laid this out a different way so that our output cap is closer to our pot, but that, that's not necessary. Not on this design. There's not going to be a whole lot of noise if we run that much of an output, AC output line. You know, just space everything way apart. Scroll out. Scroll in. Dump that bastard right there. Okay, now look at our spacings are great. We've got openings for our ground pour to come in and hit ground there and ground there. 
all our grounds are able to be gotten to. Now what we're going to do is we'll just do the uh, ground fill. This is fun. All right. We'll go ahead and come over here and we'll hit this polygon tool. And then we're just going to click once, let go, and come over, click, let go, pull this line down. We're doing the back one first. Click, let go. You're clicking to hit your anchor points. And then uh, click right there. And when you complete it, you'll have to call it something. We're going to call it ground. Now remember, we named our ground um, traces earlier. So all those pads are named ground. So as soon as we type in G and D, it's going to label that ground and it's going to connect it. Now, anything blue is connected to our grounds on the back side. Now we'll go over to rat's nest and that will fill it all in for us. Now we can look and see where all our weaknesses and strengths are in our layout. Here we have no room for the ground pour to get in there. So we need to fix that. There's no room for it to get in here. So we need to fix that. It's not necessary, but we're going for uh, analytical perfection here. So let's go ahead and start moving some traces. We'll move this trace over. Now hit rat's nest again and it'll fill in our old spot. There we go. We've got plenty. You know you've got enough isolation if it can fill in for you when you rat's nest it. And here we'll go ahead and this span of distance between here and there isn't great enough. So we need to go ahead and move this. And then hit rat's nest. There we go, that's filled in. Let's grab this transistor and move it down. And rat's nest. There we go. Now it still has a small footprint, but it's clean. Uh, we can make it a little more. Let's move this to the right and make it just a hair more harmonious in its layout. Let's move this down. Here we go. Uh, let's kill the angle and get this trace away from that pad zone. Okay, yeah, I want to move you, bitch. Shut up. There we go. Now that's far away from that pad. If it doesn't have to be close to that pad and you have room to move it, then by God, move it and make room. Um, let's see. We can close up the ground plane in this by moving a resistor over a touch. Let's go ahead and hit that. And there that's closed up. Now we need to move our input. Trace right here. And there we go. Well, let's get this off there. There we go. See, that was touching. And we can bring this out a little further to even fill that more. All right. Now, let's see our ground plane there. Okay, our ground plane isn't going all the way out to the edge. It should. So what we're going to do is... Let's see. Let's scoot this in. Rats nested again. There we go. Look at that. Now it's falling all the way around. Let's go ahead and move this in. Let's just dump it there, even though it's got an issue. Um, now, if you'll see, this is snapping to the grids. It's not giving us very much uh, fine tuning. So we'll go back up here to our grid, 50 mil. Let's go ahead and make that a division of that. Let's, let's make it half and go 25 mil. 
get our move. Where is it? There it is. There. Now we've got a little more resolution in our movement. So there's two choices here. One, we can look at our design rules because this is so far away from the edge. So let's go ahead and go to Tools, DRC. Let's hit Load. We'll go to our Oshpark 2 layer. Don't want auto routing. We don't use auto routing. Let's go to Oshpark 2 layer. Two, two layer. Hit Apply and check. All those caps are showing an overlap for some reason. We'll fix that. It's three caps, but six overlaps because both lugs are overlapping. But our design rules. Uh, so we can take that all the way to the edge. I just to our outer dimension. Right now, I'm just not remembering how to do it. Um, let's see. Bear with me a minute. And I'll figure out what that is. If we, we're not running under the Osh Park uh, design rules, we're going to bring that all the way to the edge for us. So let's go ahead and let's save this because we should have saved this at least once a long time ago. And we'll go to our control panel, options, directories. figure out why that isn't doing anything. Are you, why isn't no items match my search? You know, I've got this on my desktop. Let's uh, cancel there. Let's do our desktop folder. Desktop. Let's open that. DRU. Two layer routing. Let's go back to our control panel. Okay, control panel. Options, directories. Let's browse to our desktop. Let's just see if this works. Whoa, it's not showing anything. You son of a bitch. I don't understand why it's working like that. Why isn't it showing up? Oh, I know. Because it's still inside of a zip folder. Let's go back to our desktop. Let's take two layer auto routing. Let's copy that. Let's move up. And we will just put this right on the desktop paste DRU now let's see if that works let's go to our control panel options directories design rules browse desktop and it's not showing up on the desktop guys I'm at a loss for that I don't know I'll just go ahead and move that from desktop straight into my DRU file. Let's copy. Documents. Eagle. Design rules. And we'll just paste that right there. Ospark 2 layer routing. Auto route. No, I don't want auto routing. Back to desktop. Open that. Now we'll copy that one too. Let's 
See, I see, I think I know what happened. I think I cut those instead of copying them before. Yeah, because it's missing the two layer in the, so. Bear with me. We're learning how to fix this bullshit. Going to Eagle. Let's go to Cam. Aha. Eagle Cam file. All right. Design rules. DRU. Two layer. There we go. So it's in there. And that is a last part two layer. DRU file dot DRU. Okay. So they're in there. Design rules DRU. Okay. Now let's go back to Eagle control panel. Sorry. It's the kind of shit we gotta know though. Browse. Documents Eagle. Design rules. DRU. Hit select folder. They'll be in there. But it's not going there because what the hell? Eagle design rules home. Okay. Probably still not gonna work. Rats in his, oh, there it did. See that? See how it went to the edges? We actually got the directory right. Then we pointed the design rules directory to the Osh Park two layer design rules in the DRU folder. And then when I rats nested it, it went all the way to the edges. You see that? That's why we use those Osh Park design rules. They set up all our options for us. So you ain't got to screw with nothing. So there, that's nice and done. Uh, we can scoot this down a little bit now since we've got more space. And it should still rat's nest. Nope, it didn't. It didn't give us clearance. So let's go ahead and half that one more time to 12.5 mil. Hit OK. And now we are down to a quarter of our resolution. And we know that one more click is half the other, so we're going to lose that. But there we go. So the only way to do that is to move this up one more click, which is fine. We'll just move all these up one click to be nice and clean. Oh, come on, click. There we go. Now we'll hit rat's nest again. There we go. Now that's all clean. Our ground plane is all the way around. Um, now let's fix these stupid ass caps. What will happen is we'll delete these caps off of the schematic and bring in some caps that flip and work. <clears throat> when we do, we'll come back and these traces will just be sitting there empty so we'll have to just pop them back in so let's go up here to schematic board let's go ahead and delete all these electrolytics because we know they are freaking defective we'll look at our recently used see which ones they were they were the first thing we put in so they're not in our recently used anymore so we'll go up to electro caps Let's see, what we, let's see what this is. Uh, let's look at our footprint. Two millimeter spacing. Two millimeter lead spacing. 0.1 inch pad. Perfect. Five millimeter diameter. Perfect. That should be a perfect cap. That's 050 NP1. And we'll go ahead and drop that in there. Right where the other ones were. They should connect right up. Now we're going to test those. Grab your move tool. Grab these. Move them. Make sure they're connected. Uh, 
if you can, if it'll let you. There we go. Okay, it's connected. Okay, everything's connected. That's good. Now let's go back to our board. These will be off the board, but our unrouted wires will show us where they go. Why aren't you moving? Okay, shut up. Okay, maybe it just wasn't loading well. And we'll just go ahead and drop that. Beautiful little cap. Right there. Now we'll grab our other one. Grab it. Okay, I'm not trying to drop it outside of the outside of this freaking space, you son of a bitch. Okay, ground nine volt. It says nine volt, so it's got to be nine volt. And we'll just drop that right there. We'll just get it up here and then we'll line it up in a minute. I don't know what's going on with that. Why these things are being difficult. Okay. It's acting like it's wanting me to drop them back. See, you can't take something off the board and then put it back out here. It won't let you. So that's what it's acting like. If you want to put it back out there, then hit the escape key. And it'll plant it back out here for you. Okay, in. Drop it right there where our other one was. Alright, now let's rat's nest it. See what needs to be connected. Bottom layer. We will reconnect these. This will probably give us some uh, errors with some nubs, but that's fine. We can correct those. It'll let us know. There's that. Uh, let's go ahead and move this. No, nope, that's a nub. We can get rid of that. Let's just delete that. And then let's see here's where we left click to highlight then right click to choose we're going to choose this one and get rid of it because that'll throw up an error and let's rat's nest it again i'm not sure why those other caps were bad but that's definitely weird i've not run into that before let's check our center lines center line across that line to the resistor center line across that line this cap's one step high, so we're going to move it down. Boom. Now it's centered. And we've got one, two, three, four to resistor. One, two, three, four. That one's a little further away. We can scooch it over a tid. Right there's fine. Now from our screen print, we got one, two, three, four, five. Screen print one, two, three, four. Okay, let's scooch this one out. One. There we go. Mm-hmm. I like that. Bam. Oh, but look, we got too close to that. And we've lost our ground. This happens. So we go ahead and fix it. We go ahead and default to this cap spacing. And we can move this cap up just a hair too. Nope. It won't let the ground plane through there. So up and over. Just do this till you get it all to fill in. And then this cap here we know has more room anyway. So. We'll move it up, over, rat's nest it. Eh, looks good enough. We'll move this trace over, move this trace over, and there, that's got a nice fill to it. 
Now we can, let's see, let's check our center line, runs across the top of the resistor to our center line there. That's good. We can count our blocks. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Close enough. Let's just look on it from the back. If we zoom out and let's look. Yeah. Close enough. I don't even give a shit now. Alright, so now we're going to measure and get our pots where we want them. These are just these aren't pot mount, these are just uh pot leads, so you can wire off board. But you can squeeze your pot leads together and use a pin pot, PCB pin mount. And so let's go ahead and grab our dimensions. And we want horizontal. Let's come off that and go. It's going to be backwards because we're putting this on the ball. Actually, let's switch it to top. There we go, top. Let's kind of figure out where we're at. Let's go 15.24. And let's go this way. 15.24. Click. Bring it down. All right. Now we can see how uncentered these pads are. So we're going to leave this one where it's at, and we're going to scoot this one out just a touch to match. So we want that square pad just on the other side of that. Blink. And that's good. Now let's see if we need to fix any trace routing. Let's nest it make sure we're clear. We're good there. Oh, we need to move this. That's way too close to the ground. So we're going to scooch that up away from there. I mean, as far as our design rules, it's got enough clearance. Or else it would show us a little mark that it's encroaching on it. But All right, now let's uh, go out and we'll hit our layer settings up here in the top left. Let's hide all these layers, except for T-Place. That's going to show us the top. And that's the top of our board. No routing whatsoever. T-Place is going to show us our LED. We don't really want our LED showing on the top since it's, it's you know, we just want to see two pads. We don't, we don't need to see this screen print there. But as far as having these for our uh, component placement, that's good to see. Um, for looks wise, I'm going to scoot this cap down just a bit. So it looks nice and uh, straight with everything. It looks okay. All right, now go to layer sets, hit preset standard. I'm going to come back up. And you don't have to do this, but if you want to pull up all this ground plane, there's a magic script. Go up here in your window, click it, and hit rip up R I P U P space at semicolon, and then hit enter, and it'll all go away for you. And then you can just come down here and see it without all that ground plane in the way. There we go. That should make for a decent layout right there. Now hit Rat's Nest and it'll fill it all back in for you. All right. I like that. Now we're going to put some art on it. Um, so let's move all this group up. Hit your group button. Um, here, let's hit rip up. At semicolon enter. And we're going to grab this whole group and its traces, and we're going to move it 
up just a tidbit. Right click, move group, and then we're going to scoot it all up. There. That's right, it's necessary. We got clearance. We have enough clearance. So I can scoot these up just a bit more. This is the time consuming little stuff that, you know, good layout requires. Ah, oh, shit. Let's come back down just a let's, let's hit just control Z. Control Z. And re ratchetness that. Okay. I mean, technically, we can scoot this cap out and this cap out and move these things up in there a little closer. Or we can respace our resistors. Yeah, we could do that. We could turn these caps, but I want the positive side of the caps all pointing up. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll hit that group again. Oops, hit group again. Click off the board, hit move, click off the board so it unhighlights those. Ah, oh, shit. Now hit group. Damn you bastards. All right. And we will just scoot this group of stuff down just a touch onto these things. Click move. I click move group. And we will gently move this down. And we'll plop it there. And then we will Look at that, rat's nest is looking clean. Very nice. All right, now let's uh, rip up. I do the rip up at semicolon here just because I've had it pull the ground plane with me. Now we will go ahead and select that entire group. And scoot it up. Right about there. Oops. Looks all centered. Let's check to see if we've got space. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and move group again. We'll bring it down just a touch more so we can get a good ground plane between these. We want it filled. And there we go. So that's as high as we can get it. There's much space across the bottom. Now we're going to run this trace, select our bottom because we want this trace on the bottom. Go ahead and connect that. Rat's nest. All right, all of our electrical part of it is finished. Um, ground. Oop, where's our ground tab at? We need another ground tab so we can connect our power. Let's just go back to the schematic board. Let's go to ground T and we'll copy that. So go to copy, ground T, and plink, ground T. Should be it. And go back to schematic board. Hit the move button, click on the board, actually hit group, click off, then move, and it'll unhighlight those. Grab our new ground pad, bring it up here, and we'll drop it on the other side of our diode there, our LED. All right, that should be good. Hit rat's nest. Make sure that's attached to ground. It does not look like it is. So we are going to hit 
schematic board. We're going to name it. Just ground. And rat's nest. Nope. Let's go back to board. Let's click this one. Let's just call it ground. Okay, name ground already exists. Don't be so touchy. Well, let's just do this. We'll just go ahead and route these together and connect them. Make sure they're connected. They are. Let's go back to the board. All right, now it's connected to a ground, you see? And we'll rat's nest it. And now it's got a ground X on it, see? So that's something we had to do. All right, so now our wiring's all done. Let's look for uh, any kind of errors. Go up to Tools, DRC Check. We're going to load a, uh, our design rules. Apply and hit check. And we've got a wire stub right there. So we'll get rid of that. Hit your rip up button. Right click, right click till it selects it. And then it's gone. Now we've got an air wire, which is probably in the same spot. Yep. So we will go ahead and hit our routing. And we will just go ahead and click on that. And our air wire should be gone. Now run tools again, DRC, check, and it's gone. So that's all good. Everything's passed with flying colors. All right, now let's go to doing some art. First thing we're going to do, let's call this, uh, let's call it a yaff. Yet another fuzz face. Hit OK. You're not going to barely see it. It's coming up on the bottom. Now we want to change that. So go up to the top, pink. Now it's going to turn around. But we want to put it on the layer 21 screen print layer. T place. So let's click that. There we go. Now let's make it real big. Let's make it a little fatter. 12% will fatten it up. Let's go to vector. Always pick vector on there. And go to 66. Go to 100, Jesus, 254. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Just plop that right there in the middle. But we don't want any of this screen print on any kind of pad. So we'll just uh, go ahead and plop that right there. And then we will move this transistor over just a smidge. There we go. All right, it's nested. It. Still looks good. Lots of clearance. And now we've got it on there. Looks centered to me. No, not quite. We can center it a little better. So now click that. Yet another face, fuzz face. It lives. Okay, let's move our in. We're going to delete that actually so it doesn't say in one and out one. Ground. Okay, let's just delete those. In one. Let's delete that. Let's make it prettier. We'll just type in. Lowercase. Make it smaller. That's huge. There we go. In. Let's delete ground eight. We'll just call that LED minus. 
lowercase. Let's do lowercase. I like lowercase better. LED minus. Okay. Click. And then let's do LED plus. Oops. Shift plus. I mean, it really doesn't matter. We can just, it doesn't matter how we hook these up. So we don't have to put plus or minus. We can just put LED in brackets right in the center. But that might be still confusing to some folks. And then we will go to out right there. Out. We'll put that just to the side. Move this just to the side. All right, and oh, let's did layout. Uh, let's see, design and layout. Bear Hampton. All right, now we've got that floating around. Just right click it, and you can move it around. And see, that doesn't look right because it's go in the wrong direction. So you go up here to your flip spin flag, click that, and now it'll spin it the direction we want. So it reads like that. Click and done. <clears throat> now we got to write something cool and funny because that's what everybody does. Um, let's see here. Uh, First thing pops in my head. Oh, don't touch my drums. I don't know why I said that. It's just the first thing popped in my head. And we'll put that right there. Remember, this is if you're actually placing stuff like this on a layer that has traces, like on the top you want to put it in between those traces. Otherwise, there will be a little dip in your screen print as it's printed over those traces. But since all our traces are on the back and these are going on the front, that's not an issue. But if they were on the front and we were placing this on top, we would not place them right on top of it. We would place them in the center. That way they print perfectly flat and pretty. That'll make sense if you ever have a board printed and it comes back and you're like, why the fuck can I read it? Oh, because it's printed over a trace, so it's got a big dip in it. And uh, there's that. Oh, an art piece. Got to do that, a little logo piece. This is fun as hell, too. Um, here, let's go into our folder. I got one on my desktop. Bear Amps Art. Let's go down to the bottom. Hey, look at that. It's Justin Bieber. Memes. All right, let's go to, uh, we've got a PNG. We want to change it to a BMP. So let's right click on that PNG and we will open that with paint. It's huge. It's resized it to 800 by 600 or close. So we have to choose pixels, make our smallest section 600. Don't care about this one. Just make whatever the small side is 600. Maintain aspect ratio and hit OK. Now we'll go up to save as BMP picture. We want a bitmap. Now let's pick where we're going to plop it at. Let's plop it right into the folder with what we're working on. So documents, Osh Park, oh yeah, Eagle, projects, what's that one called? NPN fuzz face. And we'll drop it right into there and then save it as a monochrome bitmap. We don't need any colors, no bullshit. So click save. Click through this. None of that shit matters. Close that. Go back to Eagle. Go to our board. Let's run our tools again. For some reason that popped up. Check. Looks great. Okay. Now we're going to import our BMP. Go to File. Go down to Import. 
go to bitmap click through that then we'll find our bitmap in our project it's good to keep things in your project folders I mean it really is there it is low res trap BMP file I should have renamed it BMP but oh well double click to open select black it'll print as white but just select black because that's going to be our the two layers there's always one above another so if you choose black and white the white layer will print on bottom black will print on top so just pick black go to DPI um, that might be really huge so pick a high number like 2500 that way it comes out smaller it's the reverse so we're cramming 2500 dots into an inch which makes it smaller then if we were to cram 500 into an inch makes it bigger there's already so many dots in the image so if we do 500 per inch and it's 5,000 dots in the image it's gonna be a much bigger image so go high go 2500 now we want it on our T place layer which is layer 21 up here so punch that in T place um, then hit OK and it'll populate and then we run the script and it will start printing it up right here rendering it right down there now this rendering is going to be really slow even though this is a fast computer it's going to be real slow i might speed this up if i have time to actually pull this video into an editor otherwise i'm just going to sit here and wait on it while we visit i'm going to smoke a cigarette kind of chill still waiting you can see in the top left hand corner there is a status so it can actually tell you where you're at if it's a big image and you're getting lost and you're wondering where the fuck am I at you know here this will tell you we're over halfway we're almost three quarters of the way getting there And we're three quarters of the way done. 15%, 25% left to go. It's hurrying. And this is a super smoking fast computer. I mean, with the latest AMD 6 core, 16 gigabyte, super fast RAM. I mean, on a motherboard that's made for ultra fast gaming and like a 6 gigabyte. Um, six gigahertz. Oh, six gigabyte memory video card with like seventeen hundred megahertz, something like that. And everything's running at like thirty six hundred megahertz computer wise. Still slow for some reason. All right, now we've got that there. If you zoom way in, you can see our file path down there. We don't need it, so just click delete and hit it now we need to group this so what you do is go up to group and then we'll just select what we have pulled in bling and it lit up then we hit the move right click move that group and it'll move this where we want it oh shit it's moving our our ground plane too how the hell does that happen uh, let's dump it there. Let's just grab this. Let's move our dimension. Let's move our polygon. Yes, polygon, I want you to move. Huh, never had that happen before. Is that a dimension? That is a dimension. Okay. Let's delete that dimension. You gotta delete right underneath the decimal point. Click. So I think that's what this thing was trying to move. All right, now let's go back to group. Um, we gotta re. Oh, fuck. Group. Reselect this piece of art. Move. 
move group. There we go. Now nothing's moving with it. And let's just plant this somewhere. Put it right there. And we can also make it bigger. If we would have just punched in like, like now we say what I'd use, 2500 DPI. If we went down to like 1500 DPI, it would fill in this whole area. But I'm not going to do that right now. Because right now we are pretty well done. All right, let's go ahead and remove all our dimensions now because we don't need them anymore. Let's get rid of that. They're on our top layer. We don't really want them there. I mean, it won't hurt anything having them there, but still. Okay, now we're going to go around the edge of our board and make sure that's straight. See how this is moved? So we're going to straighten that up finally real quick. Just look for the notches in it. Click. Okay, no more notches. This side hasn't moved. We're looking at that yellow line that's our dimension around it. We're seeing if it has any jagged edges. A jagged edge means it's not straight. We want that straight because that's the outer limits of our board. That's what the board's going to be made to. So that yellow line is important that it's very square. That's it. Okay, we need to type in volume right there. Or we can call it output. Um, yeah, let's just call it level. L-E-V-E-L. -E -E okay. And it's tiny again. Let's make it bigger. Let's see if it's close to that size. Make it a hair bigger. There we go. And we will plop that. See, that's right in the center. This is right in the center. And remember, this will be on the top layer, so it's not going to be divoted by that blue uh, trace. All right, now let's go up here to the top. Close that out. Now we want to see what our board will look like. Completely printed. Um, let's go up to layer settings, hide all layers, just hit pads, and look, no vias, you know why? Because we're not bitches. Unrouted, T-place, and there we go, that's what the top of our board is going to look like. So I guess we can add, can add 9 volt, we need to label those real quick. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. Since we're on T place, we can do that. Um, plus, select T place. I'll put that right. And let's make it big. Big plus right there. Click, and then we'll do a minus. Big minus right there. Click. And we can even go as far as to put plus signs on our caps. It's not a bad idea. Just in case. We can make them small. Go down to 0.5. We'll just put it right there. Right there. Most caps have these already in their packaging, but for some reason they're not on here. And there. And then our LED plus. That's why we don't have to have that plus there, but why not? All right, now that's what our board is going to look like when it comes out of the fab shop and lands up in our house. This looks like hell on here right now, but actually when it's printed, it'll be a lot more clear and visible. It just doesn't look so good on here right now. That's it, our board's done. Let's go back and hit our preset layers, layer sets, standard, 
that's going to bring everything up. Okay. Now we've got one last thing to do before we can call this done. We did a ground plane on the bottom layer. Now we have to do a ground plane on the top layer. Have to, have to. Or else it's going to have a throw an error on our Gerber files. Plus it's good to have it anyway because it'll tie in all of our grounds on the top and on the bottom connected together. So let's go down to our polygon. We select top layer. Go ahead and click. Click, 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 and click. Oopsie. And we'll call it ground. This might throw an error because when we rat's nest it, because I've got that right there. That's an error. We want to get rid of that. Nope. Oh, damn you. Oh yeah, we need to use delete, not rip up, because that's not a trace. There we go. Now, there we go. We have our ground plane on our top layer. And that won't be visible, that'll be under the solder mask. It's just showing that visible right now. That's, that's imaginary copper. It's just showing where all the copper will be on the top layer. And it's connected at all our ground points, because we've connected them all with the ground command. We've labeled them. What we've done is named them ground. So all the grounds are all grounded and connected together to all this copper. All right, and I can still go back to T place. Make sure it all looks right. Make sure nothing's gotten weird. T place and pads. Looks perfect. Go back to layer sets, standard. Okay, now we need to output this into something that can be printed into a circuit board. So here's where we'll go up to our cam processor. First we'll save, save it, then hit cam processor. And this is where our Oshpark design files are gonna come back into place again. We wanna go up to load, open a cam file, and then we will go to Documents, Eagle, Cam, Osh Park 2 Layer. I'll load it up. Copper 1, Specified Layer Stack, not a reference, but any Gerber output item. Okay, that must be old ones. Let's go to a little different one. Osh Park 4 Layer. Actually, it might be at the beginning of this. Let's just go to Eagle, Documents, Osh Park, Cam 9.2. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm using an old set. There it goes. Use your most latest cam files. I need to pull that Cam 9.2 in there. Now we've got no layers uh, or no errors on it. Um, select Board, NPN Fuzz Paste. That's our board. Click, click Export as Zip. All of the houses read the zip file as one unit. So you have to export a zip if you want it to be easily read. Then uh, just hit process job. It'll give you a folder to save it to. Save it to your project file folder in PN Fuzzface. And uh, that should be uh, it. And save. And it's done. There we go. Now close this out. Close this out, and let's go to our, oh, we can close everything now, we don't even need it, but now we'll go to our project file, go to documents, eagle, projects, npn fuzzface, and there's our zip file for our Gerbers. So it's the only zip file that's going to be in here, npn fuzzface. Now, we can go check out a preview at a PCB house. Just type in Oshpark. Go to Oshpark. Browse for files. Let's go to uh, let's go to projects. NPN Fuzzface. Find that zip file. Double click it. 
and it'll open up the zip file for you, pull it in there. If you try to do it, get your Gerber file individually, it's just going to be a headache. It won't work. All right, and there we go. There's a preview of what it's going to look like. And there should be a quote. Three boards will be $16.20. Now, on those Osh Park Design Rules Master Tools folder, there's a script you can run that will automatically install an Osh Park button within Eagle. Don't worry about doing that because the script is a pain in the ass. The script doesn't work with Windows 8 or Windows 10 very well because you got to have special permissions and you got to set all those permissions manually and it's just a big pain in the ass. So instead, just do it the way I did. Get that latest cam, uh, cam file 9.6 or whatever that's in there. Osh Park 2 layer 9.7. Pull that in. Set your, uh, how I showed you earlier, set your uh, directory paths in your uh, control panel. Set it there so it'll pull it up straight to it for whenever you run a cam job. And when you run a cam job and pull that, if you pull that 2 layer 9.6 or whatever it was, the latest one, into your cam file folder in Eagle, and then you run a cam job, it should automatically save that path as well so it can run it again because it'll just say, you know, uh, run a previous project cam file, load a previous project, just go in there and click it and it'll automatically point you to that. So that's it. Then all you have to do is enter a description of your project, enter an email address, hit continue. If you want to order it, I don't want to order it. And then send them some money and with uh, Osh Park in about two to six weeks, they'll have you aboard. Sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're slow. And uh, that's that. Or alternatively, JLC is a lot faster. Let's go to JLC PCB. Go to quote now, add your Gerber file, project still open, click it open. And here you can choose different colors rather than just purple. And it'll be a lot cheaper. It'll be more expensive with shipping, but you can get more boards for cheaper. So you can get 20 of these boards for the same price as five Oshpark boards. So there it is in green. You can click on it and it should be able to zoom in. Should be. But that shows our back and it shows all our traces around the back. The front has no traces at all. It's just nice and naked and plain and perfect and flat with no bullshit. So all this stuff's going to be hidden on the back. And then you can check out different colors too. Red. That's what a red board will look like. Yellow. Blue white oh white looks good with those gold pads but the pads won't come gold what you want to do is order lead free hassle it'll have a nice shiny chrome and there's black black's my favorite color for boards but anyway that's the end of this uh tutorial we're done all you have to do is come over here choose your set i'll go through this it automatically populates your dimensions once you get loaded up layers uh, I don't know why it's saying two layers on there. Oh, yeah, it is still two layers because we got a ground plane top and bottom. PCB quantity. Fill out your PCB quantity here, not later. Later, it'll only give you an option in multiples of like five, th one, three, five, or 30. So fuck that. If you want 100, you got to pick it here. If you want 15, pick it here. So you'd pick the amount you want. Pick one design. Single PCB, 1.6, plenty thick, pick your color, lead-free hassle. What? Okay. Oh, I see, because it's only one layer yellow. So let's see, red. Green hassle is cheap. Okay, I see. 
and black lead free hassle is cheap. There we go. But red will cost a lot more. So if you're going with those colors, just choose hassle with lead rather than lead free, and then you won't have any issues. But black or green are lead free with no extra charge. Maybe white is too. Nope, just black or green. Huh, cool. Copper weight one ounce, perfect. Gold fingers, no, we don't need that. We don't have any off board uh, edge card connectors. So that's just for edge card connectors. Um, standard, they come uh, just silver, leaded, lead free. Gold fingers puts gold plating on those. Confirm production file, no, you don't need to do that. Flying probe test, fully test, yes. Um, cast laid holes, no. Remove order number, that's up to you. You can hit yes, and it'll charge you only another $2 for the whole job. That's it, not $2 per board. And that'll take your order number off of there, because it'll always have a serial number, which can point people back to your product and whatever. And that's it, that's it. Then you just hit save to cart. I'm not gonna save that to cart, because I'm not going to order this because JLC is weird. If you say something to a cart, it'll almost always like automatically sell it to you and then you got to pay for it. So we don't want to do that. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this long ass tutorial and thanks for watching.